Let's take a look at one final family of polar curves. R equals A over 1 plus epsilon cosine theta, or R equals A over 1 plus epsilon sine theta. These are the conic sections with one focus at the pole or origin. Uh, and let's graph one of these right now. Y equals 6 over 1 plus cosine theta. First, I want to find if there's any symmetry with this graph. So I'm going to plug in negative theta and I get 6 over 1 plus cosine negative theta. Cosine's even, so this will be the same as cosine theta. 6 over 1 plus cosine theta, and that's exactly r. So we know that r negative theta is in the graph, and r negative theta is a reflection of r theta across the x-axis. So this graph's going to be symmetric about the x-axis. And we'll use that when we're graphing. Okay, let's plot some points. Oop, this is a mistake. This should be r equals. There we go. So, theta and r. Let's start with 0. When theta equals 0, cosine of 0 is 1, so it's 6 over 1 plus 1, 6 over 2, which is 3. And I'll skip to pi over 3. Cosine of pi over 3 is easier, it's 1 half. So this is 6 over 1 plus a half, 6 over 3 halves. 6 over 1.5, which is 4. And then pi over 2. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so it's 6 over 1, 6. And then 2 pi over 3. Cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half, so it's 6 over 1 minus a half, 6 over 0.5, which is 12. Now, Notice what happens when cosine approaches pi, or when theta approaches pi. Cosine of pi is negative 1. So at pi, this is going to be undefined. But imagine what happens as cosine gets close to negative 1. Say when it's a little bit short, this will be a small positive number. And so we get 6 over a small positive number. The r value is going to go to infinity. So what actually happens is that as theta goes to pi, r goes to infinity. Let's plot what we have so far and see what that looks like. We have 3, 0. That's right here. Right? I have 6, 12, and 18 on this, on this graph. Then we have 4 pi over 3. Pi over 3 is this direction, so I go 4. That's here. Then 6 pi over 2. Pi over 2 is this direction, and I go 6, that takes me to here. And finally, I have 12, 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3 is this direction. This is 6, 8, 10, 12. So the graph looks something like this. And remember, it's symmetric across the x-axis, so I can, I can reflect these points down. This one goes to here, and this point goes here. And so, just continuing it around. We have a parabola. Remember that these conic sections all have a focus at the origin. So, this conic section has a vertex at 3, 0. It's got This distance is 6. This distance is 6. This length, the width that passes through the, the focus, is called the lattice rectum. It's 12, exactly twice this value. And so notice the epsilon value here is 1. Whenever the epsilon value is 1 or negative 1, you'll get a parabola. And this will always be half of the lattice rectum, the width of, of the graph.